we're going to wrap up crisis planning on how to avoid scams, schemes, as it relates specifically looking at financial investments right, or financial opportunities. We're going to look at all the lingo that occurs in the internet marketing world, marketing terms that I use myself, right? And we're going to really dissect how you get sold, how you get persuaded, how you get influenced. And when you understand how you are, that's going to give you more confidence and power when you are in a conversation or watching a video or going through a sales funnel, a process to being sold into something that you probably aren't ready for. But that salesperson figured out a way to tap into the thing that you care about most. So they made you go there to the thing you care about and they tied their product, their offer to your problem, the thing that you care most about. That's why you bought it and that's why you invested. And so what, what happens is, by the way, I have no problem with a sales funnel. I have no problem with a process and a system. I have no problem with marketing tactics and influencing and persuading people. I have no issue with sales. I have no issue with none of this. This is part of life. Every day you wake up, you are either being sold or you're selling, whether you realize it or not. You're constantly selling yourself into making decisions. You're constantly being sold. You're constantly selling others to do things for you. Everything is sales. Literally, everything is sales, whether you like it or not. And we can put, we can put a different word on it, right? Whatever. But there's still decisions being made every day. If you are in the process of losing weight, you have to sell that dream to yourself of getting to the desired weight that you want to be. So you have to override the other thought or other person in your mind that wants a bag of chips, that wants to eat unhealthy during the meals, that doesn't want to have the shakes, that doesn't want to go work out versus the person that's talking to you, giving you positivity, saying, hey, like we can lose 10 pounds this month. We can lose 15 pounds, 20 pounds, whatever it is. We can be in our best shape if we would just drink our, sh our protein shakes and eat healthy and cut out the sweets and the desserts and we cut this out and we just drink water and cut the soda, no alcohol, and we, we go on our slow burn, slow burn cardios and we work out and we do all these things. So that person is selling you, their body, to do a thing, right? It works the same way with our money. <clears throat> Constantly being sold or you're the one doing the selling, but then you're also being sold into things as well. And the better you become aware of your vulnerabilities and how someone can tap into that and influence you to make a decision without you rationalizing the decision in the first place. So the goal, I believe, for this session is to help us put our emotions to the side and really evaluate these financial opportunities that are being presented to you, either by me, another guru, another content creator, a friend, a family, a colleague, whatever that may be. I'll use uh, an example. And then I'm, I'm going to lay out some steps that I personally take. And it's like, it just totally puts all the emotion to the side, whatever bias, whatever opinions I have about that industry, about that investment, about that particular way of making money. And I just put it over here and I just put it through the system. I put the opportunity through a system. If I'm talking to someone that I know that's influencing me, I'm putting them through a system as well. No matter how much I know them or don't know them, I'm putting them through a system and the opportunity that came with them through a system. So let's take it to the whiteboard. <clears throat> Matter of fact, let's, let's look up, let's look at the definition of a scam, the legal definition of a scam, of a scam and a scheme because there's two different things, right? So legal definition of a scam, the intentional use of deceit, a trick or some dishonest means to deprive another of his or her money, property, or legal rights. And then the definition of an illegal scheme, because there are, there are schemes in this world, right? And the word has a negative connotation, but there are legitimate lawful schemes, and then there are illegal schemes, right? So that's why I put legal definition of an illegal scheme, which means to defraud a systematic ongoing course of conduct with intent to defraud one or more persons with intent to obtain property from one or more persons by false or fraudulent pretenses, representations, or promises, or willful mis 
representations of a future act. Hopefully you're getting value from this so far. So that is our understanding of an illegal scheme and a scam. Now, how do we avoid these things? We live today in a content-driven world. That's what we live in today now. It is a content-driven world. Many of us make decisions because of a video we watched, because of a person taking a photo of a thing, a post, a caption, a thumbnail, a title. People are making decisions faster than ever. So many more, I would argue more people are finding love on on apps, swiping right, dating through the internet and, and discovering love, making decisions to meet someone before you actually meet someone, right? So it's, it's penetrated our decision-making when it comes to finding love, finding a mate. It's penetrated our, our decisions as it relates to our finances. Every single one of you are in this room because you made a decision to listen to a guy whom you never met before, never shook his hand, never broke bread, never worshiped, together, never pray together, none of this. And you built up enough trust to say yes. Isn't that crazy? Again, I have no problem with that process. It just, it comes with some unintended consequences that can hurt us if we don't put things through a set of systems, if we don't evaluate how we came to say yes to this person. And here's what can really mess us up. Everyone in this room found me on the internet. You're like, I like this guy. Okay, he's helping me. Okay, now I trust him. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get on his email list and I'm gonna click his link and I'm gonna reach out and now I'm gonna pay for a consultation and I'm gonna invest in him and all this stuff. And then it worked out and it was great, right? And you're getting results and you're being fed and it works. That can let your guard down when you find the next person that you wanna work with. So you find the next person that say similar characters to me or similar integrity, similar just way of communicating. I was using a communicative system that worked for you. That same person is using a system to communicate similar to mine. And you're like, okay, I trust this guy or this gal, right? But then it doesn't work out or it turns out to be a scam. And you're like, what the heck, right? How did that, how did I not see that coming? And I would say most of the time, because I'm not saying this a hundred percent proof system here, but I would say most of the time, the reason why we get scammed is we did not have a system of evaluating that particular opportunity. That really sets the framework here. So specifically looking at financial investments, or we can say opportunities. So financial investments slash opportunities that result in making money, right? anything that has to do with making money because there's scams out there that are in the world of giving money right you give money you think you're helping someone in there you know they got the gofundme and they're actually taking that money and living a luxurious life and you thought that money was going to save this person to get a uh, a heart transplant at the hospital that costs two hundred fifty thousand dollars and so you and all your family and friends gave to this to help that mom live so she can be where kids. Turns out the mom was a scammer. She took that 250K, bought a Lexus, bought a house, all this stuff. Turned out to be a complete fraud. So we won't be talking about giving money and the, that resulting in a scam, specifically focusing on any financial opportunity or investment that results in making more money. Making money, boy. What, what a motivator that is for every single one of us in this room, whether we like it or not. Our desire to make more money can blind us. It can blind us. So if we don't have a good foundation, if we don't have peace and we think we're going to get peace through this, that's a problem. That's a mindset issue that must get solved. All right. So not only do we have to fix the mindset and how you think and your belief about this, we, we fix your belief systems there because that's really gonna help you build another strong foundation. Then looking at, okay, yeah, I need to make money in this world, right? I need to be able to take care of my family. I need to be able to leave an inheritance for my children's children. Let's put it through a system. Very first thing, any, any opportunity that has ever come my way, whether that was someone making a video and sending it to me, an email, um, something I discovered. I went to a networking event, I went to a conference, I met someone and they said, hey, you should look into this. First thing I started doing is research and due diligence. Then what I do as I'm researching whatever that investment opportunity is to make more money, the person, video, whomever, there's gonna be someone that I'm gonna talk to 
more than likely. And that someone is probably going to have a sales process or that someone is going to lead me to a sales process. So I would suggest going through the sales process to gather as much data as possible without paying. So basically capture as much free information as humanly possible without paying for anything because you're in the research and due diligence phase. So it's a combination of two. After you've done your research and you've developed a fair amount of education and knowledge, you've gone through the sales process, you see the offer, you see the investment. Okay, here's how much it costs. Here's what it should yield, right? We're, we're getting all the information. Here's what you should do. Go seek a second opinion. Just like we do when we get, when we go to the hospital, we go to a doctor and you go to the general doctor and you're like, doc, I have a pain right here. He does a couple tests. He has no idea what's wrong with you. Then he recommends you to a specialist that specializes in this area. So you go to the specialist and he says, okay, well, so we're going to run some tests. Boom. It's, it's one of these three things. So we're going to test these three things. So when it comes to financial investments, we should absolutely seek a second opinion from a professional in the industry. Now, this is another service I provide being a professional in the financial industry, right? I'm considering myself a second opinion for you. So you come across an investment opportunity, feel free to email me all the information about that particular investment, all the details, everything, what you're looking to do, you know, you're looking to make this move soon, whatever the case may be. And you say, hey, I'm looking for a second opinion. Denzel, do you know someone about this? Or can we talk about this? And then I can give you my opinions, guidance, and then I'm gonna test you. Hey, what's your system? What have you done so far to evaluate this opportunity? And my job is not to talk you out of the investment or talk you into it. My job is to simply reveal, have you gone through the system that we established? Oh, you don't have a system. I got you. We need to create one. Here's a system. Go through this system and chances are you're going to find holes. We're, we're looking to poke holes in that opportunity. We evaluate those potential risks and say, okay, am I willing to take on that kind of a risk? Which leads to my next point here is after you've sought out a second opinion, whether you come to me, right? And this doesn't cost anything. This is my genuine interest in the people in my community that I'm leading to not lose money that we worked so hard in building our financial discipline for you to make an investment in Bitcoin ATM machines or some network marketing company, multi-level marketing company, direct sales company, some real estate syndication, all to just lose it all. Let me tell you, boy, does it hurt my heart because I'm like, wow, John, you spent three years watching me and then you made an investment in me three years later for 2,750 bucks. And then, you know, you got all the results during the three years, right? I was, uh, I was helping you pay off debt just through the videos alone. Then you decided to take me on as a financial accountability partner. I'm working with you. I'm helping pay off all your debt. And then, you know, we worked together for an entire year and a half, two years, become completely debt free. You got the HELOC, you've got the credit cards, you've got great cash flow, and then you find this sexy guru. Oh my God, so handsome, so beautiful. The guru, the lights, the action, the flash, the Lambos, the boats, the jets, and you get infatuated by what? Whether you like it or not, you get infatuated, boom, making money. It happens to us all. Don't think it don't happen to you, it happens to you. You just gotta be able to catch it. Oh, wait a minute. Why did I do that? Spend a little too much time there. Whoa, 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 what's going on? I didn't even consult with the father in heaven. And I just pulled all this money out of my HELOC, invested in that real estate syndication. I was told I was gonna get 12% rate of return every single month, quarterly, dividends, yearly, annual growth, tax savings, strategy, you know, all this sexy stuff. And you spend 20 minutes with that guru. They, they put you through their sexy process, $100,000 investment, 250,000. 100,000, 550,000, whatever it is, and now you're broke, and now you're in debt. Now you're five years behind, right? We, we, made, we made five years of traction, right? We, boom, and then you just made one decision that set you five years back. So if you were 40 when we first met, and then we we're 45, five years later, and we made all this prog prog progress, now we're five years ahead, but you just set yourself back five years, you're at 45 years old, you just erased from age 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, erased all that progress. Now you got to do it again at age 45 to 50. Drives me up a wall. And this happens. This has happened to some of my clients. Not everyone, but this happens to people, right? And I'm like, wow, what made you put in all that time effort in me? But then 
this person, you gave them six minutes and you said yes. You decided to marry that person. You dated me for three years, but then cheated on me. And now you go and make this investment. Interesting, right? How does that show up in other areas of your life? I don't mean to go that deep there, but think about it, right? It's interesting. So are you willing to lose the investment? Every financial investment opportunity has risk. When it comes to making money, key, 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 there are risks. Risk that you will fail. Risk that it will not work. Risk that it will be a scam, right? All these different things. Risk, 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 risk. There's risk and everything. So let's ask yourself, am I willing to lose this money and it not change my mindset? Because here's the thing, maybe the industry that you want to get in is a legitimate industry, say real estate, but there are illegal scams and schemes that occur all day long in the real estate investing space, no doubt. So after you get a second opinion from a professional in that specific industry and they have no incentive for for you to make that particular investment and hopefully someone that's not going to sell you into their thing oh yeah don't go with him don't go with her come with me type thing right you don't want that you want a professional genuine individual that's going to give you their feedback and say have you looked at this have you looked at that have you looked at this if these three things are missing that's not what you want to be looking at right point blank let's say you go through it you're like, boom, the research turns out great. The sales process is amazing. Second opinion says, yeah, I can vouch for that particular investment because I did it myself and it worked, right? Something like that is, is nice. Are you willing to lose the investment now? Little tip when talking to salespeople, right? That are trying to sell you, right? They're trying to close. Just simply hit them with this line. I need to do my due diligence and vet you, the salesperson, the organization. I've never seen a salesperson overcome this line, right? because it has nothing to do with whether I have the money for your investment or not. It has nothing to do with that. This is purely me saying, hey, I don't know you. Before I marry you, I wanna get to know you. Before I get in the bedroom, I need to know some things, right? I need to know what I'm getting into. I need to test you, I need to vet you. I need to do my due diligence. This has nothing to do with me not trusting you. This is just my process, right? And if that salesperson keeps pushing, keeps pushing, keeps pushing, guess what? Hey, red flag. If they can't honor and respect what you're doing, what you're trying to do, to gather the data, to go look for the laws, the regulations, the protocols, how that industry actually works, do you? We need to be detached from that that drive of, of making money sometimes. We have to detach us, especially as kingdom citizens, especially as believers. We need to detach from that desire sometimes. We have to look back and say, wait a minute, wait a minute, I serve an almighty God, almighty power being that has provided for me, I'm at peace. Okay. This is a, say once in a lifetime opportunity. They, they've sold all the different things and they made a huge discount offer on it. I have not yet done my due diligence. I need to do my due diligence. I need to consult with the father. I need to go to my second opinion. I need to do my research, do my due diligence, go through the whole process and then say yes and go from there. Here's an example now of a very, very, very popular, well-known industry that has been well known for making very successful people and also scamming and scheming many people. That is the multi-level marketing industry, direct sales and network marketing industry. This is an industry that I personally have participated in. I can honestly say that I don't think I've ever participated in a scam or an illegal scheme. What I have participated in is business opportunities, investment opportunities that did not work out for me. Clearly it worked out for someone else, right? They had certain skill sets, certain things that they were putting in place that they were applying that I wasn't and they won. They made more money than me. I don't consider that a scam personally, right? There is a belief in the internet world as it relates to this particular industry, the multi-level marketing, direct sales, network marketing. There's some interesting history behind this and so you've got the anti-crowd these are like you know anti-religion right is that that's the comparison i would make it's like no religion no matter what right and it's like well wait a minute you know there's a place for religion it has its place so the anti-crowd are basically people that have been hurt by the industry kind of like people that go to church and then they stop going to church because they were hurt by the church so they have church hurt now they're anti-church now they're anti-religion and that's terrible because it puts them further and further and further and further away from God. Doesn't make God the scam or church the scam. It's like, no, there was just within that industry, they were hurt, manipulated, intentionally got defrauded in that case. 
<clears throat> so the anti-crowd, what they believe is no matter what the company is, it's already an illegal scheme, an illegal operation. Now, the problem with that argument is when we look at jurisdiction, United States tax law, and we look at commerce, we look at the protocols, right? The multi-level marketing industry, the direct sales industry, network marketing industry has been legitimized, unfortunately, or fortunately depending on where you where you sit. So if you're in the fortunate crowd, you, you use that to your leverage, right? You use that to your leverage. The unfortunate crowd, they're just they're just a loud voice. And their goal is to reduce that industry as much as possible. Problem is they are they're losing miserably. Because what they don't realize is there's been laws and protocols put in place to actually protect this type of model, right? So let's go over what the model is, just so that you understand, because literally I would, I would say almost every person in the United States, every home at some point in time will probably get approached by a multi-level marketing company, direct sales or network marketing company. At some point in time in your life, you'll probably get approached. That's how huge this industry is. It is a household name, very, very powerful. So let's look at the model. What is the model? of multi-level marketing. Basically, you've got an individual and you've got a company, a legitimate company, right? All the proper documentations and articles of incorporation and all that. It's a, it's a company, there's a product, there's a service. Usually every company ha will have some sort of staff. It's paid directly from the company itself. In order for a company to make money, it needs a product or a service. In order for anyone to find out about the product or the service, you need a sales. To bypass a sales team, a company can either hire an outside sales team or they can run ads, do marketing, pay for traffic, come to their product, boom. Cuts out this person, the salesperson. All you have is the staff that serve the company, that serves the clients. There's no selling, product or service, all the profit goes into the company. Right. Some companies have an internal sales team. Now, this sales team in a traditional company, a company would hire, hire a salesperson as staff, as an employee. They sell, they get an hourly wage, and they get commissions, the ability to earn more money, and they can rank in the company. That's traditional. In the network marketing world, it's all based on who's first. Right. So you have the company starts, they have the product and the service, Maybe they have a staff, maybe they get some funding. They approach people whom they recruit and they teach that first person to recruit three or more people. Maybe it's two or more people. In this example, I'll use three, right? Company recruits one person. They teach that person how to recruit more people. They give them a system, they give them a model, but what they don't give is a, they're, they're not an employee of the company. So not an employee. So they're the only way this salesperson can generate money is through the sale of a product or a service. Company typically does not provide them a guaranteed pay or anything like that. That's usually what most of these direct sales, multi-level or network marketing, right? <clears throat> so what happens now is typically in these kinds of models, the only way to really make a lot of money is you have to actually recruit more than you sell and the actual product or service of that company. So it actually becomes more about recruiting and it's all about you find three, who find three, who find three, right? Who find three, who find three, who find three. The problem with that, problem with this model, if you find three who find three who find three who find three who find three, and you keep doing that, you can only go so far before you have actually have more than the actual population of planet Earth. You can only go so many levels deep before you've, before you've recruited the entire planet, which is just not a thing. It's not gonna happen, right? Because there's so many other companies that are competing for market share of that particular product or service, right? So why is this such a good model? If you look at it from the perspective of the company and the founder, the reason why this is such a phenomenal model and through laws, regulations, and protocols has been legitimized and protected by big, big money, right? Big money is it's very, very cheap to get these people. It doesn't cost nearly the amount of marketing and ads that would need to be run to sell people on the television or even on 
Facebook ads. They can leverage the people to do all the selling. And so now you're putting in all these hours, not getting paid a dime for all that marketing effort because you're not an employee. You're not getting a guaranteed base pay purely based off product service and or recruiting. So what happens is in a lot of these companies, you make more money when you recruit an individual rather than when you sell a product. So here's the problem. Technically speaking, from a, when, we, when we look at like the laws and stuff, this is actually not a scam because if it was, these companies would not exist. It just wouldn't be allowed, right? A company goes to register with the Secretary of State and, okay, what is the purpose of your business? The purpose of my business is to scheme people and defraud people and start a, you know, a trafficking company that traffics people into uh, getting into the company by use of manipulation, mindset, motivation, high ticket sales events. It's not going to work. But you have to understand, this model is very, very protected for whatever reason, right? I may have just given you all the reasons. You can do this deep research yourself. I've, I've gone down the rabbit hole of this stuff. The problem is this isn't really a scam what I just shared with you. It's not a scam what I just shared with you. The problem is, and the only way this would be validated as a scam is if there is no product or service. That's the only way. But now these companies have gotten really smart. They're very smart. So what they do is because they need a product or service in order to be not considered a scam or a scheme, right? The only way this model is actually a scam or a scheme is if there's actually no product or service, like it's immaterial. And it's just putting you through a, like a motivational process of like coaching and whatnot and motivation and recruiting, but there's actually no product. That's when SEC, FINRA, and all these different uh, institutions can come in and probably take that company down, right? So what these companies did was they said, okay, we will recruit Denzel and he'll have to pay for a product. So, so we have proof. What's the product? A membership, right? So yes, he's going to buy a membership and we have to create some kind of a product, some kind of a physical product or service. And we need to require Denzel to pay for that service. So I got to buy the membership that gets me into the business, that gets me the ability to sell or license to sell their product as a distributor. They give you a fancy name, independent business owner, independent, you know, distributor, all this stuff, make it sound sexy. And we need to require him to buy a certain amount of product so that when we get audited, the company, uh, the, the auditors will see, well, no, we, we are selling a product, right? We are selling a service. The problem is, are there actually real customers? Are there actually real customers? So the only way these institutions can actually take this company down is by figuring out if there's real customers or not. And that's very hard to tell because Denzel can be a distributor and a customer. And so can Tom and Miner and Brenda. They can be in the business, but then also a customer because they're required to buy the product. You got to be a product of the product. And they sell you all these different things. So again, like everything that I'm sharing with you, it's actually not a scam. That's the, that's kind of like the big dilemma here where it's like, but it, but it sounds like one Denzel. It sounds like this is not going to work. Like long-term you did the math. Okay. If I recruit three, who recruit three, who bring three, who bring three, who bring three, like eventually the person that's down here, this guy, right. <clears throat> that's trying to bring three is having a terrible time because they already brought everybody in. They already brought everybody in. So it was really, really hard, very, very competitive. Denzel's sitting pretty. So was Minor, Tom and Brenda. But then as it gets lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, it gets very, very, very hard. And then what ends up happening is it crushes. The system crushes on itself because the only way Denzel can keep making more money is by what? recruiting more people. Well, if the recruiting stops, eventually the money slows down. And if Denzel and Miner and Brenda and Tom were buying Lambos and Jets and we're motivating all these people, right? And then we see the money start to slow down and slow down and slow down. And in order, in order to keep our image, we got to buy another Lambo, another jet, another home, another big thing, another big you know, vacation, da, da, da. Eventually it comes crashing, burning down. Only then does the SEC, FINRA, all these different organizations come in and shut the company down. But by then, thousands of people have been hurt, financially speaking, because they bought into a system that unfortunately or fortunately is technically a legitimate system, <clears throat> right? And the reason why this most likely will never be outlawed out of our laws is because that's how 
traditional companies do the same thing. It's just slightly different. It's a slight difference. A traditional company has all these element, elements, a sales team, a product and a service, staff. A network marketing multi-level company has a company, has a product, service, has staff, has a sales team. It's just how these people are getting paid that makes it a world of difference. It's really tough. Like it's a it's a mind twister. Um, you know, comment your thoughts. Like it, it, it's this is tough. So you're either you know after getting exposed to the internal model, this you're either just going to join the anti crowd and just be like, you know what, I I don't even want to deal with it. Right? This is just too much. And I would honestly say that's probably like that's the easiest thing to say here. Sure. You miss out on the potential opportunity to making tons of money in a multi-billion, multi-trillion dollar industry. Sure. But there's many other ways to do this, right? Make money. So you might just be, you know what? Eh, some of you in here are like me and you're like, what if there is a legitimate way of doing this, Denzel? What if there is a effectively legitimate, productive where everybody wins? Is that possible? And so if you're like me and you go down that rabbit hole and you spend all the time that you spent like me and you're a little weird like me, then I would argue I do believe there is a legitimate model here that, that has integrity and isn't scheming people or misrepresenting what could be. And that's tough. That's very, very, very tough. So if <clears throat> you are someone that has been approached recently, and here's what will happen in any market crash, when we're, we're talking macro economy, US economy, every time there's a market crash, there's a recession, there's uncertainty, these multi-level marketing companies, network marketing companies, they shoot up in revenue because they have the best motivational speakers. They hire the best people on the planet to host these events, these workshops, these transformational events. They bring you to it, you get sucked in, you get motivated, and you're like, oh my God, it's amazing, right? We're gonna make all this money, we're gonna help all these people. And then they show you the orphanages that they're building and they show you all the, the good work that they're doing. And so you, you, you buy into that because they're feeding off desperation. Many of these companies, not all of them, many of them, right? There is an overwhelming majority of a certain particular model that's literally consistent each and every time. It's the weirdest thing, no matter where you go. So we wanna keep that in mind. So if you are currently being approached and you can comment if you have been approached by a network marketing company before, <clears throat> you can name the company, throw it in the chat, or if you're in one right now and you're like, Denzel, it's great right? Like, feel free. Don't, don't be shy. Comment, right? Comment your thoughts, your opinions, put the companies that you've been approached with, and we can literally do our homework together. And like, I'll literally share my screen and go through the process as if I was being introduced to that company for the first time. My little process here, I, I do, I do all of this, right? Cause I'm being approached by a financial opportunity to make money, right? So I'm gonna go through this process. But in addition, specifically talking about the multi-level marketing industry, direct sales, network marketing, I'm gonna be asking myself when they're going through their presentation, are they focusing more on recruiting or product, the service, which is it? To me, if they spend more time on educating me on the product and the service and how the product or service is gonna change my life, transform, improve my life, that's a green flag for me. If they're all about recruiting, Denzel, here's how to leave your nine to five. Denzel, are you tired working at your job? Do you wanna wake up one day at any point in time of the day? Would you like to have a four hour work week? Would you like to go on the beach and have your laptop check in for four hours in Cabo and not have a single worry and just know that money's coming in every single day based on you not having to do any work and you just be with your family more? Would you like to do that? How awesome would it be, Denzel, if you were a boss, if you were the CEO of your life? And then for those that are, you know, the Christians in, in this space, they'll pff, they'll put the faith on you and they'll, it's very good. I'm telling you, it's very motivating stuff. You got the best speakers in the world that do this. Good, good, good stuff. So recruiting sales, what do they do more of? Red flag, if it's all recruiting. Green flag, if it's more sales, more service, more like here's our company, here's what we do and here's how we serve people, right? Here's how we transform lives. Then you want to run the compensation plan with the person that introduced you to the company or their upline if they don't know how to explain it. Most do not know how to explain the compensation plan. They just give you a generalized compensation plan. You're gonna wanna ask for the full compensation plan with the disclosures and everything. Most people only get PDFs of how the compensation plan works. You wanna get the disclosures 
full compensation plan, everything. And you wanna run it based off of personal production and sales with no recruiting. So you would want to ask the recruiter, can I make the same amount of money without recruiting? That's very important. How is it that I could be a part of a company where I never really sell the product, but make more money than people who sell the product because I'm recruiting. That's wild. How is that possible? All I'm asking, can I make the same amount of money in terms of every time John recruits a person versus me sell a product, who makes more in that transaction in the company? If the recruit if the recruiting process makes more money, just the recruiting, not even talking sales, not even talking about what that recruit person does like who, who they bring not even counting that I'm just talking like I bring in one person and I get paid $300 for doing that but when I sell a product to an actual customer I only get $50 that's a little weird so that's slight slightly weird but that's not enough because there might be some justification there so let me just be totally transparent there might be some justification for that um, <clears throat> if I can't produce a stream of income that more than uh, arguably we would want it to be more than what our current income is at our job, right? If I'm just selling customers, customers, very, very important, customer acquisition, how much money can I make realistically doing that? No recruiting whatsoever. And most compensation plans will reveal that you need an element of recruiting and all of the sales pitches and all of the videos within the company's sales presentations and onboarding process is focusing so much on here because they know within their own compensation plan that's the only way to really make a lot of money in the companies you got to recruit right and all I'm trying to find out and what all you should be trying to find out is hello sir hello ma'am is it possible for me to make money without recruiting and not just make some money is it possible to me to to make the same similar close to at least the amount of money a recruiter would make after you've done that and again you can come to me because i've studied this quite a bit so you can come to me and we can run the compensation plan together and i say look look at this look at this look at this look at this all right then you want to analyze the company's focus and upline organization because you might have a totally different experience in a network marketing company than someone else that joins that same network marketing company T world of difference right because here's the thing a multi-level marketing network marketing company you've got the company the founder the founder goes and recruits say Denzel but what he didn't tell Denzel was he also found minor and then he also found Brenda as well so Denzel Brenda minor both start at the same time. Let's say Brenda has 25 years in the recruiting industry. Miner has 10 years, Denzel has zero. Denzel goes and acquires customers, right? And then some recruit along the way. Brenda's like a master recruiter. She recruits, a, recruits this whole team. Because she has more experience than Denzel, anyone that comes into Denzel's ecosystem and Denzel's downline is not gonna receive nearly as good of a training as what Brenda could provide or even minor. So these people might not succeed because of their leadership, but it's the same company. So that's the thing with network marketing companies, you, you, you need to analyze who your upline is and we need to go multiple layers up. And the person that's talking to you may not know who that is. They might only know who their upline is and their upline might only know who their upline is. But you wanna get those facts and you wanna genuinely ask them like, who am I under? Whose leadership am I under? There's usually a major leader and then there's smaller leaders, and then there's your direct upline, the person that recruited you in the company. Person that recruited you in the company is often someone you probably know, long distant high school buddy that reached back out to you, college buddy, middle school buddy, right? It's often, you know, maybe a coworker of some sort. And then there's this leader out there in, you know, la la land that you can't find. Right, because they're living in Cabo, they're in Hawaii, they're traveling everywhere, you can't get a hold of them. That's kind of tough. So you, you kind of need that middle leadership. You need someone, preferably, that can pour into you. And sometimes that is, that's a part of knowing or having an edge on whether or not this is a good opportunity for me or not. So you want to analyze the company's focus. What, what, are they, what is the company focused on? Sales, providing a phenomenal product that's unmatched or is it all about recruiting motivational talks inspirational messages bring john maxwell bring les brown bring tony robbins bring the greats hype these people up so so it's more 
emotion, less logic. I think you need both to success in business, right? But there has to be a balance, in my opinion, right? And then you need to know who the upline organization is. Because that'll kind of give you an idea of like, you know, who I'm working with.